Good afternoon, everyone. This is Brian McDonald. I'm going to just reference that this meeting's being held via Zoom under a log signed by originally by Governor Baker in 2022 and extended with uh, Governor Healy through March of 2025. Um, this is being recorded, as you just heard, and it allows these local recordings and uh, MCB makes them available to the public. So welcome, everybody. We're going to change the order of the agenda a little bit um, and have the minutes uh, approved later on since Kathy's uh, going to be delayed a little bit before she gets on this call. So we'll jump right into the commissioner's report, if you don't mind, John. Hey, good morning. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Brian. Um, glad to see spring is arriving here finally. And uh, Nice weather outside. I haven't been outside more than 30 seconds to grab my mail, but other than that, <laughs> um, seems to be nice and warm at this point. So, um, touch a few based on a few things going on at the agency. Hello? Um, Hello? Yes. Hello? Okay. They must have been unmuted. Um, so we'll talk about a, a bit some of the things going on at the agency. Um, uh, so summer's coming, and that means our summer internship program is, is moving right along. And um, uh, placements are occurring, and uh, everyone is uh, working hard to, <clears throat> to get up to speed for the opening ceremony. Um, we have soft skills training happening this week. So all, uh, all consumers who are uh, interested in, in participating in the internship program, we ask to participate in the uh, soft skills training program. And uh, it works out well because they gain valuable skills, even if they've uh, done those before, uh, it becomes, let's say, good uh, opportunity for them to to do what they need to do and uh, use those skills to help develop um, their um, uh, you know future employment uh, needs that they might have as as they proceed through college and that sort of thing so that's that's moving forward and uh, we look forward to returning back to close to the numbers that we had um, before the pandemic the job fair is uh, also continuing that's another uh event that we hold in october uh, i have a but the planning has already started and uh, there's a meeting this afternoon i'll be sitting in on and that's that's working out uh we it seems like we're going to continue to use the model where folks are presenting to employers um and um we're also working on see if we can come up with new ideas for our employer education seminar. Um, that's we use that uh, seminar um, two or three weeks before the event to help market the event to uh, new employers or employers who just uh, found out about MCB uh, um, assisting folks who are uh, legally blind in, in obtaining jobs. So that um you know we're kind of kicking some ideas around and maybe we'll make some changes for that in employer education uh, seminar um i had a chance to attend the national council of state agencies serving the blind uh, conference in washington dc um spent a lot of time meeting other uh, agency uh, heads uh, some are commissioners some are called executive directors or directors uh, talking about different um, uh, programs different training opportunities that um, agencies are trying out or working with or trying to develop had a chance to hear from the rehab service administration um, talking about um, some of the the feedback that they're getting from the agencies looks like a lot of agencies are, are moving back towards uh, what was happening before the pandemic uh, numbers are starting to move up employment uh, placement wise 
and uh, numbers of consumers uh, applying for services as have uh, back to normal or nearly back to normal. So it's good that, to see that people are taking advantage of the um, opportunity to get some vocational training. Um, also, um, a substantial portion of time was was uh, dedicated to the Randolph Shepard uh, vending program. Um, it's uh, a program that was severely impacted um, by um, the pandemic. Obviously, the model where people are working from home now and no longer are going to the office has has had a significant impact on the customer base for these uh, vending stands. Um, you know, we, we still have a few, uh, well, 20 that are open or so. And then and where I wish these phones would just stop talking. It's my, my work phone continues to go on. I'll turn this off here. Um, so it, it, the stands have, have been all impacted by working at home. And so people are kicking ideas around of what to do. And, and I mean, the customer base just is not in the buildings anymore. And, and so that's whoever comes up with that answer uh, is, is going is, uh, to be uh, extremely appreciated because it, we have to come up with some other ways to offer people who are blind and visually impaired an op opportunity for self-employment. Um, and it may not be exactly as we have known it in the Randolph Shepherd program, but uh, hopefully um, some ideas can be. Uh, experimented with and, and and kicked around to see if they um, will have an impact or can give individuals who are self-employed another opportunity to to maintain um, their ability to support themselves and and uh, do it as a self-employed individual. Um, we also um, t uh, you know met there were some companies there that. Uh, again, had some AI products that they were showing and uh, others were offering uh, some new training opportunities. Um, so it was very, very an educational conference and a good turnout. Uh, a, a substantial number of agencies attended um, uh, this particular convention. So it, um, it, it works out very well. And, uh, it's uh, something that uh, I look forward to uh, connecting with other uh, commissioners and directors and learning about what other states are thinking about, trying to see if any of that might work here uh, for the consumers here in Massachusetts. Um, this Sunday, uh, Saturday, uh, this Saturday, I'll be uh, presenting at the Bay State Council uh, Conference and give them an update on, on what's going on here at the agency uh, and uh, look forward to, to seeing every, uh, any folks there and chance to uh, to uh, meet and chat with some of the consumers and uh, get a feedback from them on how they feel things are going here at the agency. Um, more here on an agency note, uh, I'd like to congratulate our Director of uh, Orientation and Mobility Allie Bull, she had a baby yesterday, a so baby boy. So uh, congratulations to her, and uh, and she'll be out for a bit. And uh, we're we're working uh, uh, working hard here to to cover what she did. We have folks in place that are, are working uh, um, to take over her the duties uh, temporarily while that she was doing and. Um, she did a lot of uh, advanced planning and got a lot of uh, uh, meetings and a lot of planning done for the White Cane event that comes up in October. So, again, congratulations to, to Allie. And um, later this month, I'll be meeting with the uh, National Industries for the Blind uh, staff. Uh, as uh, you may recall, we are working on a self-employment um project with them where uh we're in a third uh third cohort now of uh 
of uh, individuals who are interested in becoming self-employed and um, they're coming in to, to talk about uh, some ideas and, and, and some um, uh, things that they'd like to, to discuss. So I uh, look forward to meeting with them. It's uh, coming towards that time of year as we're heading towards the summer where RSA will be looking for ideas for reallotment projects. So as you recall, the dashboard was one of those ideas that was put forward to us uh, to provide st uh, statistical data on the agency. Uh, Nate can give you an update uh, more on that as he's lead on that project. And uh, if you have an interest in knowing more, it's coming along pretty well. Uh, if you have an interest in knowing more, you can ask uh, Nate uh, later. Um, on the fiscal side, we're doing well. Um, uh, our fiscal team has done an outstanding job at managing uh, the fiscal situation that we had. We have not had to reduce staffing. We have not had to do any program cuts. Uh, and um, the money has been actively managed and we are moving uh, the money where it needs to go, and we're doing a pretty decent job at uh, using those funds. And uh, we had a target of, of extending the 23 grant into into March, uh, worked well, and we actually actually moved it into April. And we still have little pots of money here and there that we're finding in 23 money that we're we're moving into place and uh, to help us uh, uh, pay for services and keep extending out now we're looking at the 24 grant um, that we're working with so um so everything is going well uh our budget as you all know was funded um uh, by the governor um at level funded so we're we're good there um we have uh, been filling positions and uh, working with hr to get things keep things moving so everything is is uh coming along very nicely. Um, the, I think I'm pretty sure, pretty much getting to the end. I don't have that much more. So I'll turn it back over to Brian and uh, I'm sure Nate will be ready with whatever uh, information he has for us. Thank you, John. <laughs> I, I do have one question. I, you know, we cross our fingers. Uh, any movement at all on new SAB members? I know some were being reviewed and so forth, or a couple anyway. So, yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't heard back. I, I will email them this afternoon. I know that they've been working on the state rehab council, and they they they've the paperwork for our SAB members have been has been completed and turned in. So that I I think it's just this process that they go through, but I, I will email this afternoon when we're done here and, and try to get an update. Um, okay. On that. That'd be helpful. Yeah. We're just <clears throat> always struggling about the whole quorum issue, you know, so That's it'd be correct. good to have more members. It would be good. You're right. Okay. Thank you, Nate. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to share my screen here um, and bring up the dashboard. Um, to give an update on the dashboard that we're working on, uh, we are in the process now of me communicating the methodology of how to obtain the numbers out of our case management system. Um, so we have gone back and forth and uh, talked about what we can do, what we can't do, how it's going to be updated monthly, those type of things. Um, and right now we're at the point of methodology. So I'm explaining that to them. I'm creating a document that I'll be passing to them along with some raw data for them to duplicate it to uh, assure that uh, it is working correctly. And then from there, we'll um, start to look at the aesthetics of it, um, how it's going to look on the dashboard, but more importantly, the accessibility of it and the explanations around each of the numbers. Uh, we'll be taking a look at after that. So I'll keep you guys posted as we go. Uh, we're on track to be done by September 30th, if not well before then, um, but that's where we currently are with that. With the current dashboard, uh, we ran the numbers yesterday. We currently have done 725 registrations for this calendar year, which is um, quite a few. It's uh, 
you know, trending to be a little bit more than we had last year. So we'll see how, if that continues. Uh, for registrations, uh, we had, I checked this morning, we had two that came in today. Uh, so it's, um, we're at two there. I'm sure they're already processed and kind of probably were picked up at 10 this morning, to be honest with you. So we're probably at zero there. Um, not a lot of changes. We had a little bit of an increase in the SR cases. We have 64 additional uh, SR adults in our case, open caseload right now, uh, increasing to from 2,210 to 2,274. Uh, we have seven less children um, that have aged out. Um, and we have eight additional DBES cases. So um, a net of uh, 65 new cases on the SR side of the fence from last month. Open VR cases, also a slight increase. Uh, we went from 725 to 739 for an increase of 14 cases on the VR side of the fence. And we have six additional um, children in our pre ETS case mode. Um, for closed SR and SR children's cases, we're currently at 941 closed SR cases for the calendar year. Uh, we're at 51 closed children's cases for the calendar year. Um, closed VR cases for the year, we're currently at 138 successful closures for the uh, fiscal year, I'm sorry. Uh, we have uh, 81 unsuccessful closures. So uh, trending close to the number that we've had for the last few years here. Um, so we'll see where we land there at the end of the fiscal year. Um, we have close to 1,700 people that have been um, referred over to some sort of support services uh, so far this calendar year. And we've processed um, 3,123 certificates of blindness already this year. Um, we see that increase a little bit every year, and we're really trending to increase quite a bit this year. We haven't even hit our busy point for those yet. Um, and already uh, trending at a much higher number than we've had in the past for the amount of COBs requested. Um, we've done close to 500 IDs for folks so far this calendar year and processed um, 66 EDP uh, applications and 33 disabled black cards. So that's where we are uh, with our numbers. Nothing um, that kind of sticks out to me, a little bit of an increase on the SR side of the fence, but that makes sense with the higher numbers we're seeing on the registrations uh, coming in. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions? Uh, this is not really important, but I'm just curious uh, on my own uh, of the numbers you just did, like the COBs and stuff like that. So there is some seasonality to it, apparently. I, I just figured it would be kind of a constant, you know? Yeah, when it gets closer, there's a couple times where it really increases, Brian, um, kind of around the change of the um, the new year, we see a little bit of an influx, but uh, tax abatement season is July 1st, so uh, uh, June, July, and August, and really it's kind of led into September, are very busy. We see the numbers more than double for those months than compared to other months, um, so we're going to get real busy real soon here with those. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, if I could jump back just for a minute then to Kathy is here. Thank you, Kathy, for coming. I know you were held up earlier. Just to do an official vote for accepting the minutes for the April meeting. Uh, if um, Blair or Kathy have any questions, otherwise we'll go for a vote. I have no questions. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. And I'll second that. And thank you all for your flexibility and patience with me today. No problem. All in favor, aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, now we're officially, official meeting and officially approved the minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone have um, questions from the public at this point on anything? And, and, Blair or Kathy, I know Kathy, you just joined a little while ago, but do you have any questions for the commissioner or Renate as well? we'll just open it up wide open here. <laughs> uh, Nathan, I have a question. Good afternoon. Uh, can you tell me if there's a preferred strategy in determining uh, the timeline for uh, 
distribution and completion of services to a client on the on the VR side, I guess. Is there isn't really uh, a timeline. Everyone's so different, Blair. So right. we, we, depending on what their track is and, and where they currently are, and anybody who's in the VR program is going to be looking, obviously, for some sort of um, employment at the end of their uh, goal. So, you know, some of those people need more training than others. Um, some might need more uh, assistance and just... Uh, preparing themselves for work personally. Um, it could mm -hmm. be things in the home, it could be um, orientation and mobility to and from work. Um, it could be really gaining the skill sets needed for whatever particular uh, employment objective they have. So, that, I mean, we see, um, you know, some that are within a year, we have uh, a, a successful closure. We see some that might go a decade. Um, you know, because they might be a student and, and go right. through the school process and, and, and uh, through college, then through kind of the career exploration and then kind of deciding on, on an employment goal. So it really depends on the individual there. We don't put a timeline on any of that. Um, you know, we could for sure provide some sort of like average timeline of what that looks like, but it really depends where they are. Um, obviously, the folks that are in school are much longer. Um, the ones that um, are out of school, it really depends on the training and education and other wraparound services they need to be successful. Right. Thank you. You're welcome, Blair. No, I know you have your hand up. Yes. Ahead, oh, hi. I didn't know if you were ready for me. Um, I, I actually just have um, a request really for the, for the commissioner. Um, I serve on uh, the Mass Hire Unemployment Insurance Advisory Council, and I we are in the process of putting together, based on the bond bill, an accessibility committee. And um, uh, I know that um, Richard Jeffers has reached out to you about having a participant from the commission um, be on the accessibility commi committee. Um, and I just kind of wanted to put that on your radar. I know you've been on vacation and you have a lot of things on your plate, but um, if if you could, you know, potentially provide a, um, a technology person, that would be great uh, for the um, accessibility committee as we work on this uh, pretty mammoth uh, undertaking with the unemployment insurance um, system. Okay, so... So I will, I will certainly ask um, the individuals in our department. Uh, we yeah. are not um, accessibility specialists as far as making something design. Oh, no, design no, no, that's accessible. not what this is. If, yeah. if you need something for a technology, um, actual equipment or software, um, I will uh, speak to our director of technology and, and uh, we'll, we'll have someone... Uh, are the meetings virtually or in person? Yes, the meetings are virtual. Um, and, uh, okay. you know, it's just the early stages. We have someone from MRC and someone from okay. MOD representing, you know, All it's right. it's just um, it, just to make sure that, uh, you know, the, the 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 state is kind of keeping okay. up with accessibility. Yeah, we will. We will have somebody there. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions today? I think everyone wants to get outside. <laughs> yeah. I won't be late again because I feel like I missed everything. <laughs> I'll read the minutes. They're always very yeah. descriptive. <laughs> All right. Well, I, if no one else has any questions, we can adjourn early. Uh, oh, wait, no, no, is your hand still up or I, wait, how do you put it down? I don't even know. Oh, I, I didn't put it down. Okay. But I'm, I'm done. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank so you, that said, thank you everyone for your time. Enjoy the day, and uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, bye. Thanks.